Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. It's good to worship with you here today as we begin our series called Shattered, Finding Hope in Suffering. And Pastor Derek's going to get us started as we walk through the book of Job over these next six weeks, looking at the problem of suffering, looking at um, our life and, and what it means to find that hope in the midst of that all. So we're glad that you're here to be a part of that. Just a quick uh, announcement before we begin our worship. If you need communion brought to you in the pews today, I'd invite you to find an usher and let them know that you need communion union brought to you when that time comes in our service. We want to be able to provide that for you, so please let them know uh, before we dive too deep into our worship today. Uh, with that being said, would you please stand? And would you take a moment and introduce yourself to one another here this morning? Hey, Jonathan. Good. Let me read it. And let's begin our worship today in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. This morning we take time to confess our sins and we do so using the words of David from Psalm 31 found on our screens. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are in distress. Tears blur our eyes, our bodies and souls are withering away. We are dying from grief and our years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained our strength and we are wasting away from within, and our enemies are conspiring against us. Dear friends, we often find ourselves in times of sorrow and suffering, looking to ourselves for help and solutions. We learn from David during his misery that he turned to God, declaring, but I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, you are my God. So hear these words this morning, that you are forgiven, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, knowing full well that your God has heard your cries and answers them in his grace and his mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as David reminds us, our future is in your hands. Rescue us from our enemies, uplift us from our sorrow, and give us courage in the midst of our suffering 
that we may draw on your unfailing love. Rescue us, Lord, as we call on you for help. Amen. Please be seated. Natalie. All right. I would like to invite all of the children to come forward for the children's message this morning. If you are new, if you are a guest, please feel free to come on up. If you've been here for years, we'd love to have you come up too. Good morning to all of the kids that are worshiping with us online. Um, And as the kids are coming forward, adults that are in the pews, if you would look in front of you, there are connect cards. If you would take a couple minutes to fill one of those out, we'd love a chance to get to know you better. If you have needs or prayer requests, that's a great place to put those. And then on your way up for communion, you can just go ahead and hand that to the usher. So that's what we can do with those. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? It's a nice springy summer day. I need a couple people to come up and Help me with something, okay? I need you to be good builders, though. Nick, you want to come? Okay, Louie, you can be on one team. Nick, you can be on the other. Uh, you guys are going to need some helpers. You want to pick one or two helpers? Because I got a challenge for you. Who wants to be their helpers? A couple people. Reed wants to. Calvin, do you want to be a helper? Okay, that'll be enough, right? Do you, you want to find a helper, Nick? Yeah. All right, so... I have a challenge, all right? And you guys are going to have to cheer them on as we go. Your challenge is to build the tallest tower with the materials that are in your bag in 30 seconds. You think you can do that? Okay, so it's this team versus this team, all right? Don't look in the bag until I say go. Are you ready? I'm going to keep track. You have 30 seconds. You guys ready over here? Ready? Set? Go! You have 30 seconds, the tallest tower you can possibly build. Okay, looking good. All right, 15 seconds, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, stop. Okay, now you guys help me judge. Who's tall, whose tower is the tallest one? We have this tower over here. This is going to be tower one or tower two. Which one won? Tower one? Yeah, it's a lot taller. Well, it's actually not a lot taller, but it's definitely taller. All right? How'd you guys do it? Your tower is so much bigger. They have more pieces. Well, they do have more pieces. Do you think that played into it? How, you couldn't yeah. get yours to be any taller? We used literally all the pieces. You used they literally have, all the pieces? We have like 10 pieces, they have like 20. Well, that seems like it's not very fair no. to me. No. All right, thank you. You guys can go ahead and sit down. It's not very fair that you guys had like literally 10 pieces, and this one, they have like 30 pieces. I bet if I had given you another 30 seconds, you could have gotten your tower to maybe be even up to here, right? And if I would given you even longer, you could have gotten it stronger and bigger. And it's just not very fair that the other bag over here didn't have as many pieces. Have you guys ever said or heard somebody say, well, that's just not fair? Have you guys ever heard that before? Have you guys ever heard that before? Yeah, yeah. And maybe someone has told you, well, life's not fair. Have you heard that one? I bet you've heard that one. In our series that we're starting today, Pastor Derek is going to introduce us to a man from the Bible, and his name is Job. Have you guys ever heard of Job before? Job is a guy in the Bible who we don't usually think of his life as being very fair. And if you're listening to his story over the next couple of weeks, you might agree that there's a lot, a lot of things that Job goes through. He suffers, he's hurting, his life doesn't seem very fair. And sometimes our lives don't seem very fair either. Maybe you're at school and one of your friends has all the coolest, newest clothes or toys or video games, or maybe even in your own house, maybe your brother and sister get special privileges that you don't get, and those things don't seem very fair, right? And we often hear that life's not fair, which is unfortunately true because we live in a sinful world. Our world is full of sin. It was sinful at the time that Job was here, and it's sinful still today. But... The good news is, is that when Jesus came back, he took all of that and he said, I'm going to love you no matter your circumstances. Whether you have 10 blocks 
or 30 blocks, whether you have the coolest new toy or you don't. No matter your circumstances, I'm going to love all of you equally the same every single day, no matter what. And that's the best news that we get to share with everyone, is that even though life doesn't seem fair, God's love and grace is for you. All right, will you pray with me this morning? You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we thank you for coming to die on the cross and for loving us even when we mess up. Help us to love others and to share your love with them. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, if I can have a couple people help me put these blocks back, that'd be great. Thanks, Lou. You guys actually have to put them. A reading from Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one of his day, on his day, and they would send an invite, their three sisters, to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and, sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus says to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. For joy that a human being has been brought into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray as we enter this new series that you would just speak to us wherever we are. Uh, Lord, may your comfort and strength and your presence be with us here today. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as, as you know, or many of you know, we are entering this new series called Shattered, Finding Hope in Suffering. Because who doesn't want to come out of Easter, right? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about your suffering. Right? We don't want to necessarily go there, but the reality is that there are a lot of people that are suffering today. Wouldn't you agree? A lot of people that are hurting and trying to figure and trying to get hope within the midst of the resurrection message. And when we look at the, even the definition of suffering, we see this, that suffering is the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. And if you go and you look in the dictionary, there's actually a picture that shows what suffering looks like. Now, some of you are laughing, but some of you know like that picture on the right, and it brings you to a state of mourning instantly, right? What is that picture of? Gary Anderson's field goal, right? Hadn't missed all year, all year. We're still talking about it, right? Two million people claim to be Viking fans. That is two million people joined together in suffering, long-standing suffering. You ever notice about suffering? Like, suffering's not a quick thing. Like, you go through it, it's not a quick answer, or I just need to hear this, and we go through it. It is a long process. And so you think about this, as we're doing some research, one of the things I wanted to do was to get a little picture, of what does it look like in this day, how many people at a time are going through suffering, and it's just really hard to figure that out. But when we look at some of the statistics that are out there, we see this, that 19% of adults uh, suffer with anxiety. Uh, 29% are diagnosed with depression. 167 suffer from some type of addiction. 21% uh, of people suffer from chronic pain. 17 million people are living with cancer. 12.5 million people suffer with major loss. And, and that's just for adults. Imagine you bring kids into the mix of it and how much that could be. I mean, that is a pretty... That's just America. It's not even worldwide. You think about how many people must be going through really hard things every day how, to try to go through those things and to try to get comfort. And, and, and one of the things that's really important to know, like when we talk about suffering, some of you might say, well, I, I suffer every Sunday when I come and I listen to Pastor Derek and Pastor Joe preach. And I'm telling you, that, just, that doesn't fit the definition of suffering. Stop saying that. We all have different elements of suffering. And that's not even talking about, I mean, all those things, that's not even talking about relational suffering. Some of you are in relational elements of suffering or employment suffering or your medical suffering. There's all kinds of things that are going on in the world today. And I love this. When we're getting into the story of Job, Job's life is a life of suffering. 
and we're going to kind of dissect it and go through it in the next six weeks. And like Job's life and suffering, it's going to take a little bit to unfold. Like, you might want answers today, but there's answers you're going to have to wait for in this series as we unveil some things. But the, most people come down to this one question. They want to know, well, why does God allow suffering? Anyone have that question before? Sometimes you'll hear the question, why does God let good people suffer? Now, there's a lot to unpack there, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. If that is your question in this series and you want to know why does God allow suffering, I'm, uh, here's a spoiler. It doesn't tell you in this book. It doesn't give you the reason of why Job is in suffering. It's not what it talks about or addresses. And so if that is what you're hoping to get out of this series, you're just going to be disappointed. But what happens is through Job and his wife and his four friends that come into this, they're, they're, really, they're really kind of dealing with two questions. The first question is this, is God just? Do we have a just God? And does he run the world according to that justice? Now, those are big questions, right? Really big questions that, that deserve some time with that. By the way, Natalie did such a great children's message in that. It was so good, right? How many of you have heard the, that, that phrase in your household? Uh, it's not fair, right? Yeah, and, and let's be honest. How many of you have said that in your life? Uh, most of us, right? It's just not fair, Oh, I hate that thing. I hate it. And I don't know about you, as, uh, but as a parent, there's kind of two approaches that I want to do. One of them is this. I, I want to give them a little bit of sense of, of saying, oh, let me show you what's fair. And you ever feel that way a little bit? Like, like I, you, you think it's not fair because you didn't have as many blocks. Well, I'm going to take your blocks, go get a job, and buy your own blocks. You ever feel that? Right? Like, uh, you, think, you think your life is unfair. Let me show you what's unfair. Sometimes it's easy to respond like that. Or my favorite one is just fact. Well, life isn't fair. Get used to it. And we, well, we don't like to think that, right? We would like to think that everything is just, that everything is fair. But it's just not fair. I mean, look at the world and the way that we are. I mean, most of us have been given privileges and resources that most of the world just doesn't have. And so think about this. I, I, I know there's a bunch of us that are running a marathon. The reason why is because there are kids who spend all day, elementary kids, all day getting water. That's all they do. Can't go to school. They can't get, they just to survive because of where they were born. Like, where you're born matters. Like, you have more resources in some places than other places all day. We know because of skin color, it's different for people. They have different experiences depending on where you're at. It changes things. Is that just? Is that fair? No. What about gender? You think about this. There are places that if you're a woman, you cannot get an education. Well, that's not fair. The world doesn't operate in a sense of fairness across the world. And, and we all kind of want to think that it does. We like to think that everyone's got a fair shot. But it's not the way things work. Tim Keller says this in his quote. He says, if you have money, power, and status today, it is due to the century and place in which you were born, to your talents and capacities and health, none of which you earned. In short, all your resources are, in the end, a gift of God. I mean, think about that. Like, even when you were born gives you different advantages or disadvantages. I mean, some of you went through the Great Depression. That was very difficult. It, it, the resources that were available back then are so much different than the resources that are here now. We talk about, like, interest rate. Well, the interest rate's just not fair. <laughs> Don't talk to the people in the Great Depression about interest rates. It, it, it just changes where, wherever you kind of come into the story. And, and I'm telling you, one of the things that, that I love is that when we get an opportunity to walk with people who just have so much less. 
because it gives us a really good example that not everyone's on the same spot. So for example, we, we are walking with, if you don't know this, with an organization called Care Portal. And Care Portal is an organization that walks with uh, people in fostering families and those who uh, sometimes are coming from different countries that just don't have the resources in this community. And, and wouldn't you say, it is not cheap to live here. I thought that would be an amen moment. Okay, I forgot. We were in Lutheran church here a little bit. So, I mean, it's not cheap to live here. So you can imagine people with very little resources coming into how hard that is. And when we start to think about the different stories of the, of the families we're walking with, for example, we have one family that we're walking with right now that's here from Haiti. And they're in a political asylum from Haiti. And if you've been paying attention, Haiti's a mess. It is violent, and it's ang- I mean, gangs are taken over, and resources that are, being, that are being brought there are being taken from those who have a lot and not given to those who need it the most. It is hard. And so they made the, the choice to come here and to, and, and to give it all up for a better life. And we get a chance to walk with this family. There's another family that we get to walk with, and, and oh, man, it just breaks your heart. Here's a mom who just wants a better life for her kids. Don't, don't, I mean, so much of us want that, right? We just want to make it better for the generation to come. And, and she, every time that we, we have a group that goes over there and, and talks with her, she's just in tears of gratitude and thanksgiving that we are able to step into the gap, that resource gap, and help provide for them. And, and so she has said, when, I, when she was 14, she was kicked out of her house. She's been on her own since 14, trying to navigate the complexity of the world that we live in here today. And all she wants to do is to give her kids a shot. And, and I love it. She's just, she's so grateful. She's so grateful that she's got people that come up beside her and love her and try to fill in some of that gap. We have another, another family who has kids, and it breaks their parents' hearts that that every day their kids come home and they're bullied from school. And the reason they're bullied is because they just don't have nice enough clothes. You know, they, they don't have a new outfit every day. They, they are given so little. And it's not the trendy and the fashion that sometimes this area desires. And so they're getting picked on and they're getting bullied. And their school experience is miserable for them. And so we were able to come and bring clothes to them, and, and she's, just, she's just thanking you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so grateful. Life isn't always fair. And so we think about this. Um, not everybody gets to start at Go. Right? Think about the game of Monopoly. Not everyone is on. I mean, that would be kind of the way to go, right? Like everyone gets to start on go, and they all get to roll the dice and see kind of what happens from there, right? That would be the right way to do that. But if we're honest, we really don't want that, right? For so many of us, we have had a chance to start life further ahead, right? We're not on go. We're on the other side of the board and into saying, well, I think God should be just. Well, not in my situation, but (laughs) for everybody else, right? Like, we don't want to all start on go. We would have to give up a lot of things in our lives to start on go from the very beginning. And so we get this context of going, okay, well, God, well, our... how can you be just, but yet I don't always want you to be just, and you can see the complexion in this question. And as we kind of go into this whole thing of Job, we're going to unveil or go into those two questions through the story of Job. And I want to take a step back when we start talking about Job. And so here's a couple different things that are going on, and it really starts this way. So in the beginning, Annette, by the way, great job of reading. Holy cow, there was a lot of verses right? We, we, told, we told Annette we probably should take an intermission about halfway through that reading because it's so long, right? But it's a good setup of the story. And so in this story, you think about it like a trial. And so you've got God as the judge, and you have Satan as the accuser coming in, accusing God of, of some things. And, and we know in this story that Satan was kind of going around the world and seeing different things, and he's saying, well, the, God, the, the deck is stacked. He's accusing God of some things. He's saying, hey, well, the deck is stacked, and not every, it's, not, it's not fair for everybody. And so in the midst of this, he comes back to God, and God does this. And, and this is one of those things in the story that's so hard for so many of us. In the story, he comes and he says this. God, God actually comes to Satan and says, well, have you considered Job? 
Have you considered Job? And he said, well, because Job is blameless, he's righteous, and he, he's honor, he honors God, and he resists evil. You see, Satan doesn't come and saying, well, what about Job? God actually says, Job, have you considered him? And, and a lot of us don't like to think that. We're like, why did you pick Job? I'm guessing Job is up there. Well, why'd you pick me? What about my neighbor? Pick him. Like, he has this great life. And, and God is just saying, oh my gosh, look at my servant Job and who he is. And he's very righteous. And, and what does the accuser do? The accuser does what the accuser does. Is he says, well, of course his life is, of course he is honoring you. Of course he's resisting evil because his life is pretty good. It's pretty awesome. And so God does something. He says, all right, if you think that's it. I mean, he's righteous. And so here's what, here's what I'm going to allow you to do. I'm going to allow you to, to, to create some suffering in his life. And he comes back in this, and, and he says, um, Satan, you, you, I'm going to allow you to do some things in his life. And he gives him this one boundary. He says this, you can do whatever you want, but you can't physically harm him. At this point, okay, there's more in the story, but at this point, you can't physically harm him. All right, let's see what happens. And that's kind of what happens. So, so what does Satan do? He gets right at it. He gets right at it. And so uh, you, you kind of get this sense in this next verse is he has a day. Imagine this. Like you wake up and you have it all and your life is really good. And some of you have had that moment in your life. And, and all of a sudden it has changed. A piece of news or something happened. And what you thought you knew, all of a sudden someone's going, this loved one that you have has died. Or you have cancer. Or whatever that piece is that you've been laid off. Whatever that piece of information is, your life changed. Imagine this for Job. In this moment, everything was really good. All of a sudden a servant comes in and says, hey Job, your oxen, donkey, and farmhands are gone. And before he's done with that, there's a second servant that comes in. Oh, hey, by the way, your sheep and your shepherds gone. And before he's done, another person comes in and says, your camel servants are gone. And before he's done, another person comes in and says, sons, your sons and daughters are gone. And, and there are a couple things that, that we just realize. One of them is this. You notice this in Satan? He takes everything that he's allowed. He doesn't say, I'm going to take most of it and kind of give him, I'm going to like wade him into this. He just says, I'm taking it all right now, today. It's gone. I'm taking him from happy to sadness instantly. And isn't that what the accuser does? Like he, he wants to do everything he can. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he will go as far to that boundary as he possibly can. And then what does he do? He spends the rest of the story trying to get Job and his friends to blame God for what just happened. Isn't he sneaky? He's sneaky. He doesn't take personal responsibility for what's going on. But that's what he does. And that's not fair. I mean, a lot of times we say that that's just not fair. God, why would you allow that? That doesn't seem like justice at all. In this story. Now, a couple things I love this about, about Job's story in particular is can you imagine, like, how would you react in the midst of that, of, of a day like that? I, I mean, that's devastating, isn't it? And some of you, that brings back some memories of like that first moment where whatever you are working through or suffering through, like when you first heard, like, oh, that's a painful moment. And I, I think in the midst, I'm so, so struck. By the way Job reacts. Uh, in, in fact, if I'm honest, convicted. And so what does Job do in the midst of this? He comes back and he says this. He said, naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you imagine that? Like you've lost everything. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Like in the midst of it, he didn't say, God, why me? God, what are you doing? God, are you just? God, how, how do you act in that justice? He just, in this moment, he just praised God for who he was, and he worshiped. And I, I love next week, Pastor Joe is going to go deeper into that, of what it looks like to be in that moment. But I, I can't imagine. That's not my first response usually when I hear awful news. 
And the other thing that I think is fascinating about this very moment is this. And sometimes Job gets this thing, like we get a picture of him going, oh my gosh, he is this amazing person. This is just where he's at now. We're going to see that throughout the story as he goes deeper into suffering, as he goes longer into it, there are some things that are going to change in his life. And there's some different things he's going to say later on that we will get to into week four, five, and six. But in this moment, he just says, God, you've given me everything. You could take everything. I'm just grateful for who you are in my life. And so as we go through the story, we're going to see six different people who are going to speak into the story. Job, his wife, and four other people that come alongside him. And as he does this, every one of them has a different reason and a different answer for those two questions. Is God just, and does he act in accordance to his justice? And everyone, everyone has a different theory. And so we're going to have a little bit of fun in this series, kind of going through and dissecting that and to, to see what that's all about. And some of you are like, whoa, 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 whoa. I want an answer today. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't want to wait six weeks to find out, like, the end of the story. Well, guess what? You don't, you don't jump to the last chapter of the book. you got to kind of go through this. you got to kind of see how it develops and what it's like. It is suffering, right? You don't just get to the end of it. You, it takes time to go through this. And so a couple things I want to encourage you to do is... Um, uh, for, first of all, I'm, I know that some of you got some really big challenges in your life. Some big challenges. I mean, challenges to the point you're like, it's not fair. My circumstance is not fair. Why do I have cancer and others don't? Why can I not find a job and many can? Uh, wh whatever your situation is, you might be sitting there with pain and anger and you want some answers now. I, I get it. Maybe you're asking, God, where are you in the midst of all of this? Why did you allow this to go on? And there's three things I want to encourage you to do if, if that's where you're at. One of them is this. I, I want you to read a chapter a day. Actually, I want us all to read a chapter a day of Job. Start, start today with chapter one, then go to chapter two, three, four, all through the series. We're going to go through this whole book in the next six weeks. Uh, so that's, that's part of it. Be into his word and see how the story unveils. Secondly, start to, to, to journal with God. I love to call that prayer. It's just saying, okay, God, here's my situation. I know you're in the midst of this. Let's just have a dialogue back and forth and just start journaling with him about your feelings, your hurts, your frustrations. That's what I love about Job. Like it's that in the Psalms, it is a full-on book of your deepest feelings. God, God says, I'm big enough to handle whatever you've got. What, the deepest hurts that you've got, bring them to me. Your deepest anger, bring them to me. I'm bigger than that. I can handle it. Start to dialogue with him. And the other thing is this. Start to battle with other people. You see, I think that's the thing about suffering so many times is we suffer alone. We, we don't want to bring it on other people. We don't want to deflate them. And so we just sit in our own lazy boy. And the reality is, is we were never meant to suffer alone. We were always meant to be with other people. You were, at the very beginning, there was just Adam. It was Adam and God. And God said, it's not good for man to be alone. He needs a helper to come alongside him to live life together. And if you are suffering alone, you need someone to come by you, to help you, to work through things together. And I am so grateful in my life that God has placed people in my life to battle with me with whatever is going on in my life. And that I could battle with them with whatever is going on in their life. Battle with other people in the midst of your suffering. And maybe today, like you need to start that battle today. And if that's where you're at, I'm just telling you, I want to encourage you at the end of this service, we're going to have people that are going to be up here to pray and to battle with you up here and on that side. And if you've got something going on and you just need it, come up and let them battle for you. Let them pray over it. Let them remind them of God's goodness and grace and love and care in your life. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't forsaken you. He's in the midst of it with you come up and, and i'm telling you i know the accuser is in your ear saying no 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 don't do this keep this to yourself you don't want to you don't want to tell everyone else i mean imagine what they're going to think in something like that that's the accuser talking to god is up here saying no bring it to me bring it to me and our our prayer team are ready to battle with you i want to encourage you to do that and so heavenly father i just pray lord as we enter this series and as we look at Job and, and what, 
how you are speaking through this, Lord. I pray that you bring your presence into the life of people, especially who are really going through hard stuff. God, would you speak to them wherever they're at? We know, Lord, this world is broken. We know that this world isn't fair. But God, keep our eyes on you. Keep our eyes on you. And I pray for anyone, Lord, that is, is suffering alone. Lord, would you lift someone up in their life to walk with them? We ask this all in your holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And would you please stand? And we want to we wanna take this moment, we think about this, that, that the Holy Spirit has worked in our lives to, to bring us to faith, that we do walk with a God in our life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so as we confess the Apostles' Creed, we confess that together we are walking in this belief. Let us confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us strength to handle whatever suffering is in our lives. We know the evil one is attacking our trust and confidence in your faithfulness. Help, help us to take courage in your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we remember all those in our community who are suffering from a lack of resources, who live each day with the uncertainty of shelter, food, and employment. Use us, Lord, to bring hope and to bridge the resource gap. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our partnership with Care Portal and that you have used this church to impact and to provide resources to more than 100 children in Hennepin County. Lord, continue to use us to make a difference. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world that is deeply divided. Help us to remember that each and every person was created by you, and therefore we should deeply value them as you do. We pray for the 110 current armed conflicts in the world, that you would lift up your people to bring peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you all who grieve, especially Barb Dixon and her family, upon the death of her father. Wrap them in the assurance of your promise of eternal life and surround them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus as we pray the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we want to invite you at this time to come and take part in this meal and experience the grace and forgiveness and mercy that Christ brings into your life today. Please be seated.
Would you please stand? And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus, our risen Savior. As you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil, keep us in unity with all your people, and by your Spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a couple of announcements for you. Would you please be seated? Jen, you've got those for us, right? Right? Yes, I do. Okay, good. You're on. <laughs> all right. Good morning. I just have two quick announcements. First of all, thank you, Pastor Derek, for getting us kicked off with the Shattered uh, series. And I like what he said, like, don't battle alone. So, yes, you can come forward and get prayer. But also, if you would like to kind of wrestle with some of those questions and have people to battle with, we have groups for you. And so I will be standing in the gathering space kind of in the middle close to the welcome desk, and if you would like to try a group and see if there's one for you, come talk to me. And then the second thing is, if you are interested in kind of becoming part of the Beautiful Savior family, or you want to know more about Beautiful Savior, this Saturday, April 20th, we have a Connect class, and we will fill you in on the history of Beautiful Savior, our mission and vision, and ways to get connected, and you can meet some new people. So if you're interested in that, just come talk to me as well. Thanks. Everything? Your two things. Okay, so we still have a couple more things. Got it. Okay, so don't go yet. Two more things. First off, we have our prayer team after uh, worship that will be available here. They'll be in the front. They'll be in the back corner. If you have anything you want to pray about, pray over, please. Uh, we want to invite you to take part in that. And then also we just have offering in the back of our worship or our sanctuary here today in baskets. Feel free to leave that as you walk out today. You can also give online, beautifulsaviorlc.org. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Would you please stand? And would you receive God's name? knowing that uh, wherever you go, whatever suffering you might be walking through, whatever unfairness that, that you feel you might have, your God is with you and gives you his grace, his undeserved love, wherever that might be, wherever you go. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's sing.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.